Hello and welcome back. We're jumping right in here and I can promise you that there will be wings in this video. I've already mounted the weight in the fuselage to balance out the model. Otherwise, when it's complete, it wouldn't set level. If you're familiar with the A-10, you'll remember that it has a huge gun in the front that's about the size of a small car that helps balance it out in real life. There are a couple little areas on the inside of the fuselage that will be seen when the model's finished, so we want to get a little paint on those before we glue everything together. Once I figured out how everything fit, I had to scrape some paint off a few places so that the glue would have somewhere to stick. Getting the cockpit to line up in the fuselage was really fiddly. I really couldn't find another way of doing it other than to just hold it in place and apply the glue and then sit there and wait. I gotta say, the way this kit is designed, there's not a lot of material here to glue to and I had to hold it for at least three or four minutes to let the glue set up enough to where I could just let go of it. Yeah, I edited most of that out. You're welcome. I set that aside and we're gonna let that set for a little while and let the glue cure. But now we're gonna move on to some wings. So I pulled the wing parts out and cleaned them up to get them ready for glue. While there were a few places that needed some extra attention, for the most part they were they cleaned up really nice and except for one place on the engine nacelle that may require a little filler before we're done. We'll wait and see and I'll, I'll get a first coat of paint on it before we uh, go back and revisit that. By the time I had that done, the glue on the first half of the cockpit had had enough time to set and I wasn't afraid to handle it now, so we're going to put the two halves together. Even with the footage sped up quite a bit, I still edited out a lot of places where I'm just sitting there holding and waiting for the glue to drive. Otherwise, this video would be about twice as long as it is. I know, I can hear you. Use some clamps. I did, but the glue dried just fast enough to where a clamp really would have just been in the way. but. It did come in handy when I got back around to the other side of the cockpit. One of the videoing lessons I've learned in building these models is that the amount of footage you take is important because out of 60 minutes of video, you may only end up with 5 to 10 minutes of footage that actually shows what you're trying to accomplish. The rest is just all the stuff in between the actual doing of the thing you're videoing.
After looking at how the nacelles fit into the fuselage, I decided to paint and assemble them separately and then install them after the first coat of paint. That may be a mistake, so stay tuned and we'll find out. Tell you what, you've made it this far in, and which means you don't hate what you're seeing, so I'd appreciate it if you consider hitting that like button. Also, I'm still fairly new at model building, so if you see something I'm doing wrong or something I can improve on, please say so in the comments. I'm eager to learn and get better at this. I've mentioned this in a previous video, but the act of videoing what you're doing and then watching it later is a great way to critique yourself, such as a lot of you are noticing I'm using way too much glue on the rotor and tail pieces here. After watching this, I think this is where my issue with drying time is coming in. I mean, logic says the more glue you use, the longer it will take to dry. After all the pieces had a couple of minutes to set up, I started to dry fit everything and see how it was going to fit together. It looks pretty good so far. While there are some things I think Ravel could have done better, one little smart thing I found in the design of this kit that helps the wings and elevators line up is these offset tabs that overlap, helping everything stay just in the right place. having a lot of fun building this little kit, but the attention to detail is somewhat lacking, I think. I mean, you can see how much of a gap there is between the wings and the fuselage, and at the time, I wasn't sure how I was going to make those meet up. In the end though, the trick was just pure brute force. I just pushed the two pieces of the wing together until the seam somewhat disappeared. If you're ever building this kit and you get to this point, it's very important that you get these tabs in the correct orientation or the wings will never meet up correctly. Again, as you can see, the gap's pretty significant and it's taken a fair amount of force to line those up. I mean, I think you can see I'm pushing on it so hard that the sides are bending in a little bit. Once they were both on, it looked okay from the top. I mean, they were in alignment, but same cannot be said for the underside where the wings met the fuselage. I thought it odd that one of the wings on top looked like it was in alignment, but on the bottom it was definitely not. This has all got me wondering if it's a flaw in the kit or a flaw in my technique. In any case, the wings are on, and overall, I'm pretty happy with everything so far.
So after the all important applying of the wings, I thought it would be nice to work on something a little less critical to the build. So I got out some of the smaller parts I had primed earlier and started to mask off areas so we could apply some paint. Here we're just using good old hardware store masking tape to make a mask for the wheels. It, it's pretty simple using a hole template. Just find one that's about the right size of the object and then mark it off and cut it out. Taking your time with a good sharp blade, you're going to get some excellent results. That is if you don't jerk the tape up and rip the whole thing into pieces. So let's try that again and we'll go a little slower this time. Once you have the mask in place, it's important to go around the edges and burnish that in so there's less likely to get paint underneath the tape. This is important. If the whole template you're using isn't matching the object exactly and you're not willing to go and buy a new one, always go for one that's slightly smaller than the object. That way you can push the tape around a little bit and it'll work just fine. To finish those up, I applied a little bit of Tester's Gloss White thinned down with just a little bit of my homemade thinner and then I set those aside to dry. So I think that leaves us at a good stopping point. I'd like to thank you again for getting this far into the video. I appreciate you sticking around. If you've not already done so, please hit that like button so YouTube knows who to show my videos to. If you're interested, the previous video is on the left, the playlist is on the right, and the subscribe button's right there in the middle. Thank you again, and go make something.